Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham. We're in X Plane 10 flying the Douglas DC 9. This is part 3 of the video series. Ahead of us is uh, Milan Lanate Airport. The aircraft's already set up on the approach. So, today in part 3 of the video series, we're going to take a look at to the uh, ILS uh, descent, followed by a uh, missed approach flying the go-around and then taking up the hold, entering the hold using the uh, navigation capabilities the aircraft has. So it's going to be using the heading bug and the VHF radios to enter the hold. Something new for this uh, video, something I'm trying out, is this plugin called uh, eBag here. It's a free plugin for X-Plane and it lets me display PDF charts uh, right in the window. The reason I've not done this before is I do the videos all in one take and then I upload them straight away. There's no post-processing happens, so it'd be quite difficult for me to uh, overlay the uh, charts afterwards. I do it that way just to uh, spend the most amount of time uh, actually making the video content and uh, as little time as possible processing the video stuff. So this lets me uh, overlay the charts directly into X-Plane, which is uh, hopefully pretty useful. I also mentioned the procedure notes uh, that I've been writing for the uh, DC-9. Uh, I can load those in here as well, and a link to these is in the video description. You can see we've got the uh, planning information for the aircraft, all the way through cockpit prep, setting up the navigation performance, engine start, that sort of thing. So hopefully you find that useful. I'd very much like your feedback on uh, both the use of the uh, eBag plugin here and the procedure notes. I'll try and leave this uh, on screen. So first and foremost, uh, the aircraft's around uh, 39 tons or so. Just check the bug speeds I've got are correct. So 128 is more or less there, 128. And uh, we've got slats in at 162 and uh, clean speed 185. Yep, that's more or less spot on, or about 39 tons. What's interesting to know is the takeoff V2 for flap 15 and the threshold speed, flaps 40, are very similar, 128, 127, and even when we go to the extreme weight range uh, on the aircraft, you see 141, 139. And if we go down to the lighter end as well, we've got uh, similar speeds. So practically, we can use the threshold speed as a sensible uh, V2 for the missed approach, and that's quite relevant because the missed approach is manually flown. There's no automatic go around capability on the DC-9. Part of the missed approach is selecting the autopilot off. So we'll rotate, uh, we'll say go around, we'll advance the thrust levers to around the uh, takeoff thrust setting, around 1.95 to uh, 2.0 EPR. We'll rotate the aircraft towards that uh, between 16 and 20 degrees and uh, call go around flaps 15. We'll retract the flaps two stages to flaps 15. At that point, it becomes quite straightforward. We uh, wait for positive climb, make sure the altimeter is climbing, the vertical speed indicator shows positive rate, and also the rad alts increasing. We're looking for those three items to identify positive climb. When we've got positive climb, we'll put the gear away, and then we'll fly uh, more or less as a standard uh, takeoff sequence at that point. We'll accelerate a thousand feet above the field, which is going to be uh, 1300 and something uh, on the uh, on the altimeter here. Minimums are bugged and field elevations bugged. So with that, we'll take the pause off and uh, see what happens. Let me just have a very quick check because I have repositioned the aircraft here to uh, save a little bit of time. So just make sure everything is set uh, correctly or set uh, as close to correctly as possible for this uh, procedure. All looks good. I'll release the pause. So we're currently about uh, 2200 feet. There's the outer marker, which is here. And the missed approach has us flying straight ahead to 4D from the ILNT. That's the uh, ILS 109.55. So it's this uh, DME indicator here we're looking for. Just watching the power there. At 4D, making a right-hand turn, maximum 220 knots out towards the uh, out towards the holding pattern. We'll talk about the holding pattern as we're getting towards it. I've chosen this approach because it's quite a leisurely missed approach. Everything uh, should happen in really slow time with this. Just coming up to about a thousand feet above the field. Speeds where it needs to be.
it's quite uncommon to go around for uh, weather related issues. You normally, uh, if you've got an aircraft that's Cat 3A, Cat 3B capable, uh, it's very un unusual to go around for weather. It's almost always another factor. Maybe not so much when you've got an aircraft that's uh, only Cat 1 or Cat 2. Let's take the autopilot out. Caution. And we'll go around from minimums. The key thing is not to rush the missed approach. Although it's a, an unusual procedure, it's not an emergency manoeuvre. We just fly the aircraft normally, we're climbing away from the runway. So, the idea is to keep it all nice and relaxed. There should never be any stress on the flight deck. That's 100 above minimums. There's the marker. Minimums, go around. Go around power. And flaps 15. Positive climb. Gear up. Flight director's off. Just holding that pitch attitude now. Check the power set. Flaps 15 we have. There's a thousand feet above the field. I'll lower the nose. Come back to climb power. Flight directors and autopilot. Above uh, V2, plus 10, retract the flaps. And above slat retraction, retract the slats. I'll put it into heading select for the track. It's climbing away nicely. I'll select vertical speed. And uh, we're flying ahead for a further two miles now. It's 1,000 feet to go. We're just at vertical speed. And watching the speed now. I'll keep it at 210 just for the hold. So I'm looking for 4D from the ILNT. That's tuned on both. If we've got a little bit of time, Lenati 11225. So 11225. There we go. So 4D, 2.5D. Leveling off. And there's 4. We'll start the turn. There's not a, a listed intercept heading, so I'll use, what's that, uh, 105. We'll use 150. That's a 45 degree intercept. While that turn's happening, uh, we'll do some of the after takeoff climb checks. So, aircraft's clean, stow the spoilers, uh, nose light off. There we go, and ignition off. As we're coming around, uh, I'll tune the island, uh, the uh, Lenati VOR on this side as well. 12, 25, and outbound course is 105. There you go. Make sure the aircraft's uh, speed's good, it's holding the altitude, and we'll use the opportunity to ident. That's Lima, India, November. And we'll set the aircraft into nav lock. That should let it capture the radial outbound. I'm going to set the uh, other radio to the uh, 285, and we'll talk about how the uh, hold entry is going to happen. So normally, uh, to enter the hold here, obviously the hold is um, 285 inbound and right turns. Normally we do a parallel entry. We're about here just now. Normally we'd fly down, fly outbound parallel to the holding track for one minute and then turn back towards the beacon and enter the hold. The problem today is that we're holding at a fix rather than holding at a beacon, so it's very difficult to aim directly at that fix with the nav suite we've got on the aircraft. What we'll do instead is do a, an offset or a teardrop join. As we get to 11D, I'll turn left 30 degrees, we'll fly outbound, wings level for one minute, and then we'll turn back in. And that makes it easier to establish on that inbound track. So looking at the uh, RMI here, it's the tail of the needle coming round. So we're looking for that uh, 105 radial. The aircraft's uh, set so that it should intercept correctly. Quick check on uh, everything else. We're maintaining 3,000 feet 
the ident uh, has been performed on the radio aids and we've got 3.7 tons of fuel that gives us about 500 kilos to play with there's the aircraft uh, turning to track outbound on the radial and what I'll do is I'll pre-arm the 30 degree turn that's going to be about 075 or so just watching the speed So we know at 210, uh, I said 210 was my uh, minimum speed for uh, being clean. That's just in a, a high workload situation. That's a good figure to have at the back of your mind. Today, 185, we've got bugged and we know that that uh, is safe with the slats in. What would be happening in the uh, aircraft at the moment is almost certainly the first officer would be flying the aircraft just now. The captain would be speaking to the uh, passengers down the back, letting them know why we went around, uh, and also telling the cabin crew what to expect next, whether or not we'd be making another approach to land at Lanati, or whether or not we'd be diverting. It'd probably be a reasonable fuel figure around, uh, let's say, 2.9 tonnes, maybe 3 tonnes to divert uh, to Malpensa. We'd need to leave the hold with 3 tonnes to get to Malpensa, just on the other side of uh, Milan over here. But today, it's nice weather conditions, so if it was simply a, an aircraft late to vacate the runway, it would be an option to use that fuel that we'd normally use to go to Malpensa and use it to extend our holding capability here at uh, Milan Lanati. There's various restrictions on that, but uh, it is an option for us. There's 11D. I'll click it into Heading Select. It will start the turn, and once the wings are level, I'll time 30 seconds. There you go. Wings level, so just round about... Uh, the 25 past indication on the clock. Whilst we're tracking out here, I'll set the uh, 285 inbound now. It would be quite common uh, with this uh, kind of fit of the aircraft just to lead the thing around the hole using the heading bug. Uh, it gives you more control if you like, or indeed fly it manually. But I'm going to use the autopilot just so you can see how it's done. As with everything in aviation, there's multiple ways to do the same job. There's that 30 seconds, so I'll turn around. And we'll see if we can pick up the uh, hold inbound. I don't go over the uh, 180 degree point or roll the bank off. There we go. Better. That's a little uh, flight sim gotcha. Interestingly, the uh, the Airbus doesn't have that. If you turn it, uh, turn the heading bug all the way around to the right, even if you go beyond the uh, uh, behind the aircraft, it will keep the turn going. It won't reverse the turn. Just a little bit more power uh, needed. Obviously, having an auto thrust would be really beneficial. Let's click the aircraft into nav lock again. You see we're just uh, coming around here, maybe a little bit outside. That's not at all uncommon on a hold entry. Remember the hold is, uh, or the entry is just to get aligned on the hold initially. In an FMS equipped aircraft it will fly a very precise hold. Um, if you were flying it in an old DC-3 you wouldn't expect to fly this uh, racetrack pattern. The intention is just to get over the beacon at a set point. Again, FMS equipped aircraft, they'll make the appropriate wind corrections themselves, whereas for us, uh, if we had any wind in the sim, we'd have to correct it. We'd look at the drift that's applied inbound on the radial, we'd apply three times the, the drift outbound. The reason being, we're correcting for drift not only in the outbound leg, but also drift that we can't really correct for in the turns. So three times the drift on the outbound leg. Tracking in now to 11D. And this hold is based on uh, the outbound leg uh, stopping at 14D from the Lanati beacon, so we don't necessarily need to time this hold. So we're just about uh, one mile from the turn now. What I can do is 
We are on the heading bug. There's 11D. Click it into heading and then spin the heading bug around, making sure I don't do what I did the last time. There we go. And I don't plan to fly around the hold all day. What we'll do is we'll just get to the uh, the next turn in the hold, get established inbound, and then uh, we'll call it quits at that. So you can see, although the aircraft's got no FMS whatsoever, holding uh, in position uh, is entirely rudimentary. That's probably why aircraft developers in the flight sims leave the, the hold capability to very near the end. The reason being, it's just... Um, it's not something that's that's overly difficult to do yourself, um, and it's quite unlikely that you, you you genuinely don't need holding capability in the um, in the sim. But it's a pretty useful skill to have, so it's very good to practice it. I find whenever I'm doing a a renewal for my uh, instrument rating for little airplanes that it's it's very good to practice in the sim. Just get the instrument scan going again because the um, Obviously the Airbus makes things uh, really entirely straightforward. Push a few buttons and it does what you want it to do for the most part. Not so much with this model of the DC-9. So we've got uh, 3.4 tons on board. That means next time over the beacon we could uh, either divert or dispense with the alternate. But it'd be quite likely that we would uh, continue to hold and go back into Lanati if the weather and the airfield was suitable. That's 14D, turning inbound. And that's uh, the missed approach and holding. Again, it's uh, entirely straightforward. It's, uh, you know, it, it's quite an easy process in the aircraft because it's, it's all done manually. You click the autopilot off and fly the missed approach. You advance the uh, thrust levers to the uh, takeoff power setting and rotate it gradually to 16 to 20 degrees. As the power is set, retract the flaps to flaps 15 and uh, make sure the flight directors, in this sim model at least, make sure they're switched off. So, coming inbound again, we'll stick it back into nav lock. Expect the aircraft to wiggle a little bit as we do that. There we go. And it should get established uh, inbound again. There we go. So hopefully in the next uh, videos we'll have a look at maybe uh, non-precision approaches or uh, any other content you'd like to see with the uh, DC-9. I'd very much like to hear your thoughts on flying the aircraft if you had a chance to fly it. And also especially uh, if you've had a look at my procedure notes or the use of the uh, e-bag plugin. Thanks very much for listening and I look forward to speaking to you again shortly. Thank you.